smooth and very well. We know that this is homecoming. This is a little church that on the hill that began all August, April 29th, 1979. And I've been honored to be one of the ministers that has preached the gospel here. And I was sitting over there subtracting the year, so it should be 38. All right. Now, it, but it's actually 37 because one year they were ran away from here because they weren't supposed to have any black churches of Christ here. So wow. technically, yeah. it's the 37th yeah. annual. But yes, it happened, Sister Ruth. Now we sat down and yes, he showed sir. me the letter where the woman who wrote a letter saying she apologized for her husband's them making them leave. All right. But then, therefore, that's why we got this built. Didn't cost them nothing. I All guess right. their consciousness helped build this place. All we had to do was get the land. So right. this is technically the 37th annual, but I count from the beginning 38. So we just didn't happen to have an annual well, welcome. All right. So okay. here's where I stand where I learned what true fellowship is. Right. I learned what better ship is. Because yeah. you have to understand that any given moment, here in Clyde, we said we're hungry. All right. If we would cook, <laughs> if we would eat, yeah. we can't if you showed up and didn't show up, we were going to eat. Yes, sir. We were going to cook. Right. We were going to eat. Right. So I, I appreciate uh, Southside learning when it's time to eat, let's eat. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, you think I'm spoiled up here because I used to have, uh, what's that stuff? Um, Uncle Sam, who's not here, it's, it's, it's hard to see people who used to sit in certain places All right. who are no longer here. Sister so Ruthie, who used to sit Second right. seat in the on the right hand side. Then All that right. was yes, sir. Mama Reen that sat right there. Then All that right. was. Tore it and had the third sack behind in the green truck. Uncle Sammy sat in the back and yes, quail. That's what it was. All right. Hadn't eaten quail. All right. And asked him, would you make some next time? I'll shoot one if you want to, because that's how well. <laughs> I said, I would never eat vermin. All right. When Sammy made it, you ate it. Because right. he would curry it in such a way you didn't even ask what it was. You just say, can I have some more? So I'm understanding that this is why I learned how to be long suffering and patient. All right. I learned how to listen to people and how right. to lead at the same time. So this is homecoming for me because I was here for 10 years. All right. And I, I make a joke that the Lord had to make sure that I was in the wilderness. And if you check your phone, there is no signal. You might have an extra bar. Right. So guess what? You are in the wilderness. And that's what God put because he said, in order for you to go where I need you to go, I'm going to have to put you in the wilderness. That's so right. I appreciate Yes, the opportunity to make this homecoming a true homecoming. That's Amen. all right. Seeing faces that I haven't seen in a while, I'm kind of disappointed that um, this person that used to sing the song that didn't sing this song, but that's my fault for not asking it. All right. Uh, but he knows who he is, way down in ten row, but that's all right. Uh -huh. I got it not too long ago, but it's just, it's a tradition. All right. And I'm cool. But now we're cool. Uh, <laughs> moving right along, we have John 14, 22 through 32, right. which was given to me. Now, please understand. When I was given this text, with all that's in it, I said, now how in the world am I supposed to do this text? There's so much meat in this text all right. that basically there's still going to be steak on the bone because all I'm going to have to do is just give a little piece all right. in reference to the subject that I was given. The subject was given, withstanding your storm. Mm -hmm. And which we will use John 14 verses, it says 22 to 32, but for emphasis sake, I'm going to use verses 25 through 31. Right. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. Yeah. Hold on, speak to that. Thank you for bringing your food. I'm still I'm still hungry because I didn't eat a whole bunch. So some of y'all doing like this, go right ahead, don't bother me. Because that folk, some of y'all that might be going to sleep because you take taking medicine. Don't make a difference, I don't care if it's the chicken or whatever, but make sure I want to thank everyone for contributing, we got plates, and now we're going to have to make more plates on top of plates. So we appreciate Adam Street, who's not here. They had me stop by. They brought, sent me with a whole bunch of food as well. So All right. it's it's good to see, I hate to use the terminology, bigger churches still helping the smaller churches All right. continue to do what they do. Because right. at one point, you remember one thing we used to look for, we knew that when all the churches came, everybody was going to give a certain amount from each church. So whatever bill we had, 
what's covered. Right. And so I'm hoping that folk are still doing that. That's all. But if you ain't, uh, the address uh, is P.O. Box. Right. All right. But again, thank you for showing, but most important, supporting the smaller congregation because we want to still let you know the president of the Church of Christ is still here in Clyde. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the help of the Holy Spirit, or the comforter, of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring you, bring to your remembrance all the things that I've said. And he will teach you to bring you to remembrance all the things that I've said to you. Peace I live with you. Right. My peace I give to you. Uh -huh. Not as the world gives to you. Let your heart not be troubled. Uh -huh. Neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say I am going away and coming back to you. Mm -hmm. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father. Right. For my Father is greater than I. Yeah. Right. And now that I've told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. Again, your subject that I was given is withstanding your storm. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the text, we, we need to remind others and reiterate, we're talking about storms, and storms are something that's inevitable. I yeah. can't spell it, but I can say it. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's unavoidable. All right. And storms is something that should be expected. Come on now. Everybody, everybody for those school teachers, is going to have a storm that's foreseeable yeah. and unforeseeable. Yeah. We're going to have to face some storms in our lives at some time. And your storm may be different than mine. All right. And also, your storm may come at a different time than mine. Yes, yeah. all right. So we have to understand that even though our storms are different, mm -hmm. we all got them. That's right. That's right. And we all have been through some storms. We all are going to go through some storms. And if you haven't been through a storm recently, uh -uh. there's a pretty good chance it's on the way. Yeah. 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 So yeah. since having to study on this theme I was given, which y'all just have no idea how much meat's in here, but sticking to... The subject, I concluded that there are three types of storms. Come on, right? And I kind of made me mad because I should have seen this a long time ago, but this is what happened you all that study. But there are three types of storms that my, my, uh, my belief. One is storms that we bring on ourselves. That would be like Samson. You know, Samson brought it on himself. So everything he went through was his own fault. Then you have the storms yeah, yeah. that God allows to happen in your life right. because there's something behind the bigger picture that you don't know, but he knows that he's allowing you to go through something so he can do something better later on. But all you know is, why am I going through this storm? That'd be like Job. You know, Job didn't do nothing. Right. Then, of course, Jesus, um, Jesus' disciples on the lake. When the storm came for no reason, why? And then Jesus over there asleep. And they worried about the wrong thing. Right. And lastly, the third storm that I believe is storms that other people cause you. All right. All right. Well, like Joseph. Joseph didn't do anything but his own kinfolk yeah. Yeah. caused him more problems than anybody else. Mm -hmm. well. So when you understand that, that means the storms of life are not a respect of persons. That's right. If I'm not mistaken, it don't make a difference how holy you think you are. Well, it doesn't make a difference how old or how young you are. Right. It doesn't make a difference what ethnicity, what creed or color you are. All right. It doesn't matter, matter if you're a minister or a member. Yeah. The storms of life is going to show up. Sometimes it don't even knock. It'll ring the doorbell. Right. If you don't want to answer, I'll put myself in the mail and you won't bring junk mail in the house. And when you open it up, here comes trouble. All right. So the storms of life yeah. don't even care if you're a member of the body of Christ. Right. Yeah. If you want to be honest, actually the storms of life don't even care if you ain't a member of the body of Christ. Yeah. Storms don't exclude anybody. Right. So really, if we stop and think about the way society has put how folks 
uh, are going to deal with storms. They, they believe to other people, I like to call it false advertisement, or some people would say false teaching of the Word of God, that when you become a Christian, your troubles and your storms will be over. The thing is, I'll tell you, now being a Christian is a bed of roses. But if a good bed of roses, what makes them good is the thorns. So yeah, it's a bed of roses, but there's some thorns in there also. So when you become a Christian, don't let someone tell you, I ain't going to worry about no more storms anymore. Because contrary to belief, your storms has just begun. Sometimes our storms are like problems that drench us like a heavy rain. Our storms are like stress that surrounds us and overwhelms them like you live in an elbow and the flood is rushing in. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Sometimes our storms are like pressure that pound us through like the winds of the hurricane when everything is like, what's going on? But sometimes storms are like all the above. Yeah. That's rain, thunder, yeah. lightning, yeah. winds, yeah. and a whole lot of hell that comes with it, if yeah. you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes, I don't know too many people that like going through a storm. Matter of fact, if you really want to be honest how people ride in a storm and people who can't stand a storm, you know they pull over to the side and just yes, like sir. wait on it to yes, go. Sir. I'll try to move on through it. Too, right? Now you can't see nothing in front of you that Lord please tell me these folks got their lights on because if not, I'm going to, okay, somebody know what I'm talking about. All right. Sometimes our storms are hard to handle mm -hmm. Yes, sir. when it seems like you've been doing everything right. right. But you're still suffering. You don't do that anymore. Well, well, matter of fact, you ain't even thought about that anymore. You and the Lord is so tight, but it just seems like all of a sudden, if it ain't one thing, no. But Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy, 3rd chapter, verse number 12, if you live godly, you shall. It didn't maybe, you shall. Not might be, no, sir. you shall. But you shall yeah. suffer no, persecution. And when you look up the word persecution, it, it infers suffering, harassment, mm -hmm. and troubles, which can be, we can refer to today since we talk about the subject of a storm. Well, All right. Now, here's the thing. We, we, we know about storms, but storms don't always happen to be from outside sources. Man, Meaning, right. just because there's a storm on the outside doesn't mean that there's not a storm on the inside. Well, there's some storms that we're going to face from the inside. Meaning, there's some rain storms of sorrow, rain storms of grief. Mm -hmm. Let someone pass away in your home. Yeah. Yeah. That alone will cause a little bit of rain to, to, to go over your sunshine. Then you have the thunder and lightning of health issues. You remember when you used to yeah, do right. this? Exactly. My brother used to get up, he talking about, you got to get the back right. Yes, sir. That alone can cause some shaking in your life because you say, I can't do yeah. what I used to do. Right. And then on top of that, if you can't do what you used to do, now the mindset is, I'm a little afraid of the future. Yeah. Because I'm not sure if I turn this way, if I do this, something else might go wrong. Uh -huh. Then you got sometimes the strong winds of disappointment, well, yeah, yeah. discouragement. Yeah. When they blow, it, it will blow your mind, especially the ministers, where yeah. we, when you come in and you get disappointed because church folk ain't acting. All right. All right. You get discouraged because it's the church folks that's causing the problem right. yeah. that make you not want to act right. right. Then you got to despair because now I'm just so sick and tired of being sick and tired, I just want to give up. You the Lord and Satan can have all this preaching. I'm just going to sit my behind down well, yeah, and do you. nothing. Well, That's the kind of storms that folks have faced. Well, yeah. But even makes it worse is sometimes kinfolk yeah, are the worst folk. Now, if we're going to talk about kinfolk be the worst folk, well, ain't church supposed to be our family? I'm talking about you too. So. But somehow, with all of this, we are expected to withstand our storm, right? We're expected to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah. 2 Timothy 2, 3 or 2, 4. Sometimes, you know, I just won't go AWOL, but we're supposed to endure. Yeah, all right. You're expected to patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. That means 2 Corinthians. 6, chapter, verse 3 through 5. I just right. condensed it. There's a whole bunch in there, but when you get a chance to read it. We're expected to therefore take pleasures in infirmities. Uh, that would be 2 Corinthians 12, 10. You remember earlier when he got this thorn in the flesh and yeah. a couple of bit further down? Yeah. I take pleasure in my infirmity. 
I'm expected to do that, right? Yeah. All right. In my reproaches, so you just going, I'm supposed to deal with how you talk about me. In my needs, in my persecutions, in my distress, for Christ's sake. Christ's You're expected sake. to right. stay in your storms. Amen. Amen. Paul was in 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, 8 through 9, where he talks about there's troubles oh, on yeah. every side. Yeah. Then he talks about being confused. I ain't going to get the other part, but I need us to understand. Being harassed, attacked, and knocked down. You are expected to withstand that storm. All right. So the question is, how do you withstand a storm as a child of God? All right. Come help us, God. I, but I, when you know what you want to do is just throw your hands up and tell everybody in your hand. Yeah. To withstand means, being defined, to stand up against and fight with firm determination successfully. Right. Let me say it again. To withstand something means to fight against with firm determination successfully. We know our means personal, means belonging to, but the storm that he's talking about is a violent disturbance of a normal condition. A violent disturbance of the normal condition of the atmosphere. Now, because you have to remember, something, if we walk outside, the sun's out, and all of a sudden you can just see a cloud in the sky. Right. Something's disturbing the atmosphere. The next thing you know, the sky is falling down. Manifesting itself by winds of unusual force or direction, often accompanied by rain, snow, thunder, lightning, and or hail. So a storm encompasses, depending upon the heat or the cold, will cause whatever type of storm that's coming. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, I would suggest that in order to withstand your storm as a Christian, that would mean you're going to have to stand firm, oh, yeah. be all right spiritually, yeah. and still continue to work in the kingdom of God right. despite the experiences or problems right. or difficulties that you're going to receive mentally, Emotionally well, God. and physically. All right, all right. So if I'm supposed to withstand my storm, I got to be right spiritually in oh, order to let my emotional state, my mental state, and my physical state not take over and just say, I'm done. Well, all right. We all know that sounds good. Yeah. Preacher, that sounds good. But when they say, um, something sounds easier yeah. said than done. Right. But in order to understand, verse number 27, Amen. Jesus said in our text, Peace I leave you. Yeah. My peace I give you, not as the world does, right. that I do give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Right. So how does what Jesus says here help anybody withstand that storm? Yeah. I always talk about peace and get yeah, peace like a river. Yeah, I heard that, but that doesn't make sense. When all you know is peace by definition of what William or Webster or whatever Marian people say. Yeah. We got to get God's definition of peace right. in order to understand. All right. So we have to understand what did Jesus say before to make this understand why would he say this now? Synopsis. Big words. John 13 chapter, starting at verse number 31 all the way to 16th chapter. Jesus himself is giving one big long farewell address to his disciples. Yeah. So basically he's telling them bye. I, I, I got to leave. So starting with Jesus, or well, Judas, leaving, 1331, to go do his thing, Jesus now understands that the crew across the cabinet is going to come to pass. Uh -huh. And now he's trying to explain my physical departure from y'all is coming close. So when Jesus began to encourage his disciples with truth, things that they never would think about. So when he says, when it comes to pass, because what happens is, they're going to get shaken by what's going to happen. All right. But when it comes to pass, that's what he meant. So what happens is, sometimes we have to understand that, well, we're going to say sometimes, we're going to say Jesus' point, is y'all going to get shaken in your faith. Yeah. Because you're not going to, you, your mindset is the Messiah is coming down here to set up rule. Yeah. Over everybody physically, and you missing the point. Yeah. But when what I have just said comes to pass, now you're going to be settled in your spirit. But right now, I know that y'all going to be scared. So let me go ahead and give you some truth. 
Jesus, that's the beauty of it. Jesus gave them truths about something that they didn't even ask about. Right. It's almost like, let me go ahead and show you ahead of time. It's a, as a parent, you try to tell your children right. certain things. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I need you to understand this, this, this. I don't know. Okay. okay. Well, I told you, but this is dad saying I told you. Mothers won't do that. But what's going to happen is blah. And what's going to happen is blah. And what's going to happen is blah. Yeah. Yeah. They don't heed. All of a sudden, it happened just like blah, blah, and blah. As I told you before, now they will believe you the next time you have to say something. So Jesus is now basically he's encouraging them, and they don't even realize they mad. Because remember, Peter was about, Jesus, I ain't letting you go. You ain't going nowhere. I, I basically said, I re rebuke me. I refuse to let you go. Yeah. Does anybody know what Jesus told Peter when Peter said, and you ain't going nowhere? He said, Satan, get this. So what I want you to know is sometimes you need to understand that Satan will use you, and you think you're doing right, to stop the work of the kingdom. So be careful not to let Satan get into you and cause Jesus to have to tell you to get thee behind me. Now, if you're mad at somebody, don't go be talking about get thee behind me, because that just, you might cause some mess. But Jesus understands, I'm getting ready to go to Calvary Cross, and I need you all to understand there's right. some things that you're going to have to do right. when I'm gone. But he knew they didn't understand, so he starts talking about a pre that they had a um, that, that the idea of them being him thinking they'd be the Messiah. I'm going to set up a certain way. So Jesus kind of blows them off, and what he does is he begins to, to remind them again this right. about my betrayal, yeah. my death, yeah. and my glorification and his departure. When you don't understand, Jesus said, you ought to be glad that I'm going back to my father. Right. They were so caught up in the physical, they were missing. Yeah. Wait a minute, if you go, that means I'm good. But when you are caught up in the physical, like, well, if you leave, what are we going to do now? Uh -huh. You haven't you read before? All right. This is what needs to happen. But I need to, because when he said, I go to prepare a place for you, uh -huh. they should have been shouting, but they were like, well, now, where are you going? And where I go, you can't go. Why can't I go? I'm going to prepare a place for you. Wait a minute. Where you, first you tell me I can't go, but where you are going to go, you're going to prepare. What happens is sometimes that things that happen in our lives, and we miss the point, because we're so busy caught with our own closed, focused eyes, and you're not looking through the eyes of what the Word of God said. So Jesus tells them that, and Peter, you're going to deny me. You're going to act like you don't even know me. Yeah. So because of their lack of understanding, they didn't understand before the foundation of the world ever began. Hmm. Jesus already and the Lord had already made a plan. Right. But he also knew at that particular moment in time that their hearts were going to be troubled because they didn't understand mm -hmm. the big picture. Yeah. So when he says, let not your hearts be troubled, you believe in God, All right. believe also in me. The word troubled here is uh, it means to agitate, to stir up, to shake up something violently. So it means it, it movements of parts to and fro as with water is what it says here. So Jesus fully understanding their hearts. He was speaking metaphorically uh -huh. to mean right. don't let your hearts be an inward commotion. I, I want to bring you to a calmness of mind. All right. Because your composure, you, it's, everything has been disturbed by what you're hearing, but you're not understanding. He was saying that your hearts are restless. Because sometimes when you, we try to figure out why God is putting you through something. Sometimes you miss the point. Don't try to figure out, oh, I'm getting ready to give it away. Oh, I was getting ready to give it away. Oh, sometimes you just got to do it. It's, when you go through it, evaluate yourself. Sometimes stop looking at how the storm is. Find out where you are in the storm. If did I cause the storm? Did somebody else cause the storm? Or the Lord trying to tell me something? And at the bottom end, the Lord is trying to tell you something, whether you believe it or not. So Jesus fully understands their hearts. He's speaking in the metaphorically, and he he wants them to, and he gives them. Sorry, he gives them command because in essence, the text is letting us know he's giving them a command. He's telling them, do not let your hearts be troubled. He yeah. went. Oh, don't let your hearts be troubled. That ain't what he was saying. He was giving them a command. So the Greek tense of the word in the word command that he was giving, he's saying, stop letting your hearts be troubled. It's in the text where it's saying, stop doing something that you're already doing. Stop 
being clothed up weak. All right. Stop being all scared. That's what he's telling them. Let not your heart be troubled because the solution to the troubled hearts is if you believe in God, which means do you have a relationship with God? Well, Somebody said that this morning too. A good relationship with God. If you have a good relationship with Him, I've been here with you. You ought to have a good relationship oh, yeah. with me. So if you believe in God, <laughs> believe in me also. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've told you I am the Son of God. That's so if He went to where He knew they would, they would understand first. Oh yeah, they believe in God. All right. So. But y'all gonna come a time you are gonna have to believe in what I just told you. Amen. So they needed a stronger relationship with God and a stronger faith in Him. So Jesus pointed out to the disciples that same thing we need to understand that uncertainty. Ignorance and lack of faith or spiritual understanding about God's word will keep you weak in the faith. There's some things that you're going to go through and you don't know why. And sometimes it's right yeah. Oh, yeah. But you miss it because you only pick up your Bible on Sunday when you have to. And Wednesday night, sometimes you just bring it on the opening. <laughs> Boom right along. <laughs> Jesus makes a statement in verse 12 through 14. He gives them what I call a heads up to the purpose when he leaves. Right. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Well, they missed that. All right. If you do, matter of fact, you read, and whatever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If we ask anything in my name, I will do it. So wait a minute. You missed, I'm going back to my father. But guess right. what? What you're going to do is not greater than what Jesus did, but you're going to do, it's not the quality, it's the quantity of how much they're going to do. They're going to do way more than what Jesus did. But if they understand because I go to my father, right. they're still missing that he's saying, you're going to do something because I'm going back yeah. to my father. Oh. Yeah. He makes a promise that whoever believes in him, Yes, sir. Would not only do the works that he could give, but he could do more than he did. But to help you, just in case you don't understand, he says in verse 25, I'm going to send, the original text says helper, but the King James says a confidant. I'm going to send you another confidant, yeah. which is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So the Lord continues to give, he's giving him encouragement the whole time All and right. comfort. So he knows that their world is going to be turned upside down in a couple of hours. Right. And then rather than being focused on himself and the storm that Jesus knew right, he was right. getting ready to do, right. he is equipping his own disciples how to deal with the storm that they're going to face. Who does that? You know you're going to catch something, yeah. but you just ignore yourself and try to help somebody else. We understand that those are things. So now you can understand why Paul being in prison, Paul yeah. being uh, having issues, Paul being stuck in places, Paul being shut. Why he didn't care about him? Yeah, I'm in bonds, but I need you. Encouragement is what we learn. Amen. So if we understand that Jesus, the most important part, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Jesus uses the word peace twice. Whenever you hear the word, the usually special revelation, if you hear the same word twice, that's some importance to it. Yes, yeah. The first piece is a generic saying, shalom. Basically, he's just saying, uh, um, it's speaking about absence of civil disturbance or war or hostilities. Shalom, my brother. Right. So basically, here's what I say. Jesus basically said, hope you have a good day. That's what the first one is. Right. Have a good day is the only thing that the world can give. Now, suppose you have a bad day at work. Even though I said, have a good day. And everything happens at work. All I can do is give you hope you have a good day. Right. So we understand the second part. When Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Right. He's actually giving you a peace. Right. And it's going to sound theologically re religious. He's giving you a peace that can't nobody else give. Right. It's, and I try my best to figure out how I can say that, but there's no other way to say that Jesus can give you something that nobody else can give you. It's a peace that's not on the condition or the circumstances of life. 
but rather it's a peace based on the attitude of faith in him and his promises. Three aspects of this peace that Jesus gives. First peace. The first part of the peace that he gives is peace with God. Now, what does that mean? When you come to understand, because of his death on the cross, we are reconciled back to God. We are now at peace with God. Yeah. That alone basically says, you know, because of what he did, I have a right to go to heaven. Because I was sure going to hell. But because of what he did, you ought to have just peace along with that. But the second aspect of Jesus' peace, peace in the soul. When you understand that Jesus' sacrifice allows you the right to the true life. Peace, God. No matter what he or she may face on this side of life. Yeah. There won't be a day when you don't have to worry about crying, right. worrying, sickness, pain, oh. and death. Tell me we're not experiencing what I just said on this side of life. So when you understand peace of the soul, yes, I'm getting old. Yes, I'm falling apart. Matter of fact, I'll give you a perfect example of someone that just, it kind of blows my mind. L.D. Lindsay. He's got some weird cancer. And the chemos, he's been through several rounds of chemo, several rounds of radiation, went over his house, I'll be all right. You barely eating. God got me. Did your back hurt? Yeah, a little pain pill, we'll just knock it right out. If you don't knock it out, I'll just take another one. Right. Well, you know, with that radiation, yeah, and he said, they be trying to microwave me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm literally, intentionally, trying to see where he's at by throwing negativity, and he's flipping it and saying, God got me. I, he said, man, I've been on this earth for a long time. If yeah. you come get me now, I'm all right. Okay. Then, of course, the wife, she, ah, he's like, you need to come. Ah, it was so funny. Yeah. But it's understanding that he has a mind that he's peace with God. Amen. And he's got peace in his soul that he knows that that's going to come a day. Yeah. Well, I ain't got to worry about no more shots, no more chemo. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that hit me to say, that man know what the peace of God is. Because then the last part of three aspect is Christ's peace. What does that mean? It's the peace that Jesus himself joined. Do you remember when the Pharisees were always trying to be slick mouth to Jesus? Yeah. yeah. Let somebody be slick mouth to you. You think you're going to be like, okay, and then Jesus calmly, when they, he's trying to teach a class and somebody's going to bring some woman that been laid up with somebody. Right in the middle of my class, Jesus, what you going to do? So he ignores them. I wouldn't ignore them. I know me already. It'll be like this right here. You know what, bro? Because that would have been me. All right. That's the peace. The thing about Jesus knew when he had to deal with his uh, disciples, waking him up out of a good sleep in a storm that wasn't bothering him, he didn't get up and say, what's wrong with y'all? I'm trying to sleep because I'll show I'll push one or two out of the boat. But that's what I'm saying. The peace that Jesus had, knowing that he said, you're going to see my peace because guess what's going to happen? Y'all going to see how I'm going to act. But Pilate tell me, do you know I got your life? I can do whatever. He said, I only give my father's giving you what you're going to get. He goes to the cross. He knows he's got to go to the cross. Because yeah. here's the thing. If you understand what Gethsemane is, Jesus would have saw the lights of the enemy's coming. Jesus could have escaped. All right. That's the thing we don't realize. I said, wait a minute. Jesus saw He saw him coming. He let the boy sleep. All right, y'all going to sleep now because it's too late. They're already here. <laughs> the thing is, Jesus still had calm and peace. When he was on the cross, and they slick mouth and talking trash. And then you got one, dude, you dying like me talking trash. Right. You remember the song said he could have sent 10,000 angels? I said by 12 or 13,000. So what I'm saying is notice the peace that Jesus had. He didn't let that stuff bother him. So Jesus said, I'm going to give you my peace. So when you start going through what you're going right. through, you're All just right. going to shake it off. All right. And you ain't going to let that stuff bother you. And it's not that it won't bother you, because our Bush got me doing mindset is that certain things designed to bother you. Uh -huh. But you won't let it get you to the point where you become distressed, right. okay, depressed, right. and in despair because That's of right. what somebody else done. Right. So if we understand that Jesus, what he's really doing, he says, I'm, let me make sure I say this right. The peace that I have yeah. is the same peace that keeps me calm with everything that I'm doing. Well, so Jesus was preparing them for the storms that they had no idea that they were going to face. So Jesus said, I'm not leaving you unprepared okay. for unforeseen storms because I see them. There's some trials that you're going to have to go through. There's some troubles that you're going to have yeah. to go through. But you got to have faith in my promises. You still don't understand what you're going to face. But I'm trying to get you now to understand 
Let me make it make sense. It's like Jesus telling them, I need you to prepare to be already prepared for the storm you finna face. Does that make sense? Let me say it again. Jesus is like, I need you to prepare to be already prepared for a storm that you don't know anything about. All right. So, if we understand it, matter of fact, take it even a little closer. What's the one thing that pretty much everyone has in their vehicle here in Alabama? Well, What's the one thing that you take and you have because at any given moment you might need it? Umbrella. An umbrella. Why would you carry an umbrella in your car? Anybody understand why? Why would you carry an umbrella? That's right. It may rain. So you prepared already to be prepared in case it rains. So he said, this is what I, I want you to have the umbrella of my faith. So when it starts raining, you already covered. That makes sense. So we can understand that Jesus was like, y'all don't even realize because we didn't even know it was going to rain today. The sun was out. Next thing you know, church, church van came out and it was right. I said, oh, Lord, I'm glad. guess what I have in my vehicle? Umbrella. And I wasn't even expecting it to rain. So... At any given time, you need to be in stay in readiness and prepared Amen. because you never know when the rains or storms of life is going to show up. So if you're already prepared All right. to be already prepared, when they come, all right, okay, because that's what helps you respond instead of reacting. All right. Let somebody be slick mouth and say the wrong thing to you. Well. Let my sugar be down a little bit, and I'm at the grocery outlet, and somebody come talking trash. I caught myself because I told my brother, brother, do you want to die today? Yeah. And he looked at me, and I said, you got one more time. And I realized, I said, I needed a snicker. Y'all, we make a joke about the thing. Because I, I went there to get something to eat. So, and I was like, if you talk, I don't want to hear you. Leave me alone. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> So I can blame it on needing the sugar, but so I got it because the lady said she said, "Yo, cat said, no, I'm feeling lightheaded. I need something to eat." Right. I went in the store and he had no money. That's how much I was thinking. I had to run back out to the store to get it. But what I'm saying is, when I realized I got money, brought it back, I started eating. I say, "He's still in the store." I said, "Oh Lord." Now, if you know what I'm talking about, it, 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 it. <laughs> and I didn't want him asking how my mom was doing. I just wasn't in the mood for how my mom was doing. So I apologized for him, but then I realized what I'm saying is sometimes you got to be prepared to be prepared. Because he ain't got to be in the test. So he at Walmart. He should have been in the grocery shop. <laughs> Jesus want to let him know that there's some days ahead that's going to come. That's it. That you are going to catch it. Yes, sir. You are going to not know what to do. As a matter of fact, this is how bad it's going to be. As soon as they come, all oh, y'all going to run camp. Y'all really? not going to even be here. You're not even going to stand here. Uh -huh. And then I got the crazy one here that's going to cut somebody's ear off. Because yeah. he wasn't prepared. So what did Peter do? He did exactly what he'd known first. He reacted yeah. and didn't respond. Because respond means you take time to think about it. So now when things happen, I'm thinking, okay, and I start smiling because I'm like, boy, and I told somebody this morning, people have no idea. I say in my mind, you saved because I'm saved. Okay. Well. And if you don't understand that, you have to understand. <laughs> Just because I'm a Christian, I still got hands. So because I'm saved, you saved. <laughs> but I understand that you're prepared that Satan going to show up at any given time. He's looking for whom he may devour. So when he understands, we understand the word peace, it's saying, you're going to experience troubles, Trouble. but I need you to have a peaceful heart in the midst of your troubles. Okay. You need to be able to have calmness in the middle of chaos. Right. That's right. Peace that's going to help you withstand your storm. I'll give you another recent example. Perfect example. We had that tornado in Alabama. Tore up stuff. Yeah. My son was with me. All right. Now, we, I had to go pick him up from school. We're sitting at home. Pitch dark, we're sitting on the floor eating. I opened the door, looked out there, the wind caught our wrought iron door and bent it. Yeah. Now I'm the thing, got sense of chicken guy, but I'm looking at the tornado. I said, this is really gonna come through. So I closed the door and I sat down on the floor. We ate big and little chicken and the little uh, potato wedges. Now here's the point I'm trying to make. 
My son saw how I reacted in the midst of that tornado. Yeah. All right. It tore up stuff, but he never saw me flinch. He okay. never saw me upset. Right. I was calm because you know what? In my mind, I said, it's our time to go, it's our time to go. So we stayed more eat, we can hear train sound, it's coming. So now here's the thing. Every time he's in Texas and the rain's coming, everybody's getting ready to scared and feel like him. My son gets on and he'll say, why y'all acting that way? Well, it's just rain. Why are y'all acting like it's a thunderstorm? They don't understand that he got the peace that I had. So when that big thing comes in his mind, well, I've been taught as a young child not to worry about certain things because he saw my peace. So he got my peace. And so other people can't understand, how can you be calm when it's doing all this? Well, you can look back and say, well, we do. We looked outside and everything was tore up, but that didn't have my dad at. So when we take on Jesus' peace, we know how to act, just like him, because we've already seen. Jesus done showed y'all how to do everything. So there's some troubles that you can, that's going to happen, that's going to be a storm. And some of the troubles I can see, I can remove myself from them. You can just walk away and get away from it. But Jesus is going to still provide peace to walk away from it. But let's say this peace that I need is because I can't avoid bush. I know I'm going to see it. I know I'm going to run into him. I don't care what owl I try to think that he is. And it's like he's looking for me. Come on down this aisle. He's looking for me. But I say, you know what? I can still have joy knowing that even if I have to talk to him, no, he done talked about me like a dog. That's why I'm talking about him. He done dragged my name through the mud and called me everything but a child of God. Trouble don't last that long, do it? Amen. Well, brother, you know, I got something to do. Nice seeing you, okay, and be on my way. That trouble, it, it doesn't. Oh, what he does should not dictate how I act, and that's what Jesus is trying to say. Don't let them dictate to you how you're going to respond. So if we understand that to withstand our storm, you got to be prepared. You're going to have to stop. One, have faith in the promises of God. All right. Yes, we're going to catch. Okay, there's a bill that needs to be paid. Matter of fact, this is how I know I need to pay a bill. I ain't got sense, but I put my power bill in my Bible to make sure I'm going to pay it. I was like, why do I got this in here? Oh, it's due. Okay. So by Monday, we'll get it. But I'm thinking, why am I? I'm not worried about that. Because the problems are for tomorrow, but tomorrow's problems. Yeah. I'm going to deal with today. The light's still on. When I check, the water was still running. Electric. And I run it up till I can't run it no more. No, no. But there's some things that you just got to stop worrying about. Because guess what? This world is going to end sooner or later. Yeah. There's some things on this side of life. My knees are killing me. Yeah, Lord. My back's tearing me up. Yes, I got stents in my heart. Uh. I'm raggedy. I'm falling apart. Matter of fact, I used to have waves and I got ripples because it's getting thinner and thinner. <laughs> I can't worry about the physical part because guess what? It's going to decay. But it's the inner man that we need to be worried about instead of the outer man because this world storms are going to keep coming. Amen. Where there are times I still mess with Brother uh, Belford. That was the day Brother Belford used to walk fast. All right. He's slower now, and I'll say, you know, he said, Brother, you walking awful fast. I'm thinking I was doing what you do. So I stopped messing with it because you're going to pay for your raise now. So I, I'm saying, you keep on messing with it, you be somebody going to say, uh, brother Walsh, you walk mighty slow, so I just stop messing with it because I understand that that's something that if I live long enough, I'm going to have to face. But what I need to worry about that for? Deal with today and let tomorrow be tomorrow's problem. Yeah. Understand that Romans 8, 28 is there for a reason. That's the thing. It's We all know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, which if you don't love it, it don't make a difference. It don't even make sense. Right. You're called and according to his purpose. Okay. That's a big picture that we keep yeah. missing. Right. So something that you're going through that you may not realize that God may be helping you to okay. help somebody else. That's it. Joseph went through everything that he went through. Right. What did Joseph end up doing in the end? Even though his brothers meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. Yeah. He saved an entire family and generation. Yeah, yeah. But if he didn't go through it, he would never be in a position even though he did everything right uh -huh. to be held God. And the big, the big part of that whole thing is Joseph being in a position he was in was technically only the main reason was to save the seed that brought Jesus. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's what people, most people miss. Yeah, he saved the brother, but the seed came through. What was the brother that you didn't hear about for? He just said one little section, a little section of the Bible. The brother that tried to save him. 
you love for the J. Judah, thank you. I thought Bruce was going to catch me. I know. But Judah get just a little chapter, about this small. Then all of a sudden you find out, guess who the lineage of Jesus came through? So if Joseph wasn't in the position that he was in and went through what he went through, he would have never been there. Therefore, he could have never saved Judah. Therefore, brought the seed of Jesus all the way through. All right. That's right. Sometimes we have to go through and go through because God has a big picture. Big picture. Amen. Yes, you get behind someone on the way home from on 51 going slow. Bigger picture is you're trying to save you from killing yourself down the street. Right right. <laughs> it took me a while to figure that out, but it, that's why it's, I'm there right now. Yeah. All be already prepared to face the storms. It's not about knowing exactly what it is, but when it happens, stop and think first before you respond. So if somebody cuts you off, the first thing I'm thinking is have the peace sign and other things you want to do with your hands. Just understand, let them do it. <laughs> because you never know. Here's the thing. There's some people who have met me that I have no clue, have a clue where they met from. Now, suppose I had did something. They show up at the church. I know you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just need to know because I don't know your face. I'm thinking, what did I used to do? Mm -hmm. I remember you at the rec center. I remember you yeah. here. Right. So what was my reaction when that, that coach did this right here? And I forgot all about that. Right. But the way you did what you did, Amen. I respected you. Now they am preaching. And so now we have somebody that constantly goes there because uh, of something that I did a long time ago. So we have to understand that we stay in your storm, pay attention to the promises, understand that God has a bigger picture, Amen. be prepared for the unprepared, and understand lastly that your condition is not your conclusion. Okay. All right. All right. I like that. What you're going through is not the end result. All right. Therefore, do not lose heart. No, sir. Even though the outward man is perishing. Yeah. We're facing physical trials. The body's falling apart. Yet the inward man be renewed day by day. So every time you open your eyes, you ought to remind yourself of the promises of God. And your faith ought to get stronger. Strong. For our light affliction. Mm -hmm. What you think is the biggest problem in the whole world? Mm -hmm. It's light. It's light. All I say is, when he used to like get beat for a couple of hours with cattails, walking everywhere you go, getting beat, uh -huh. and then at the end, get hung on the cross. Then you can tell me you went through a strong or heavy affliction. Uh -huh. yeah. Because sometimes we just miss the great thing that Jesus did. Because he said, which is but for a moment. Right. He's trying to say that this thing that we're going through is temporary. Temporary. It may seem like 75 years is a long time, but God can blink and that don't mean nothing. No, sir. So if you're here and you're going through a storm and you seem that there's no end to your troubles, right. and you're not a member of the body of Christ, mm. the church that he bought and paid for, that means you're missing out on the blood that can help you. You're missing out on the, this gift of peace that Jesus said, I give to you. Jesus wants to give you something. That's it. That no man can do. And if we understand that he wants to give you that's that one thing which will help you through all of it, then you got to believe that he is who we say he is. He is the, uh, the Son of God. He came down on this earth, lived 30 some odd years here, knew he was going to die, yet he still, for the joy of it, he still did it anyway. If you believe that, you're going to be saying to me, I'm going to change my mind. Not saying that you're going to change the direction. You, if you don't change your mind first, your body's not going to fall. Uh -oh. Then you confess that Jesus Christ, Son of God, going to the water grave baptism when God asks you to the church. When God asks you to the church, the only person they can take you away is you. And if you are a member of the church, yes, and you sin, and you're not in right standing with God, and you're fearful of the future, right. then there's a problem with your faith. All right. You're not withstanding the storm, you're standing in the middle of the storm without an umbrella. Mm -hmm. And that's all your fault. So if yeah. anyone needs to respond to this invitation, they do so as we stand and sing a verse of our invitation song that Brother Murray was going to give us, but. Let us stand. Will you come? Will you come to?